Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining again for the third and the last day of our eGover Digit uh, Partner Training Program. Uh, so far, in last two days, uh, we have uh, covered <clears throat> the introductions, overview about uh, Digit, its implementation, program governance. We also talked about the infrastructure requirements, sizing, monitoring, people skills requirement, uh, DevOps environment, microservices, how all of that has been done on Digit. We also saw yesterday uh, some uh, some product demos about Mgram, Seva, uh, property tax, and uh, you know online business, uh, online building plan approval systems uh, modules. Uh, today. We are going a little deeper into the configuration and customization about the uh, about the digit session. Uh, oh, sorry, of the digit session in the first half, and in the second half of the day, we look at a couple of case studies. On first one being building new modules on digit, how you can do that, and second one being uh, building all new to all together new use cases or new domains on uh, on digit. So that we'll do in the second half of the day. So we'll start off with Pradeep and Vinod, who was already there with us on the uh, on the session. They will cover the configuration and customization of Digit. That will help you for uh, future implementations and some of the uh, implementations that you're already working upon. Uh, again, my regular uh, announcements uh, for uh, all these sessions. You can chat with your uh, with your fellow participants in the chat box. Please leave your Q and A in the in the question and answer Q and A tab. Your queries can be left there. You can upload uh, the questions which has already been put up so that we know that which questions are getting more priority are required to be answered uh, immediately. Uh, then uh, we can also uh, and please do leave your feedback at the end of the session. Your screen will be redirected to a feedback uh, page, which will not which will not take more than 25 30 seconds of yours. With that, I'll just stop here and hand it over to uh, Pradeep and Vinod to take it up from here. Thank you. Thank you, Vivo. Morning, everyone. Okay. So in this session, uh, we'll explain when you are starting a new state, actually, when you're going to implement. So how to start, actually, what are the configurations you need to do, actually, to go one any system to go live, actually. So we'll explain the steps, what are the structure of our code base, how we are uh, organized our digit uh, platform and where all you need to change actually, what are the prerequisites required. We'll discuss all these things, topics in the another one, one and a half hour actually. So as you know, digit is one of the open source platform for the urban e-governments actually. So this, we are using all the open source uh, softwares, the tools, everything we are using the open source APIs here. So these are all like it's a we divided into uh, multiple services actually. For example, we grouped it under core services, business services, municipal services. We'll go in more detail what is these services actually. We organized so it's, it's it's a microservice architecture actually. We divided all the work into small microservices and they are interacting each other using the API calls actually. Now here, uh, the core service is uh, providing some set of functionalities and uh, that we are using for, uh, that's a default infrastructure kind of thing. So this, this is a core service. There are some set of business services like uh, uh, in cities, business service like billing, collection, demand generation, these are all common things actually. This is used by all the modules. So these are all we grouped under business service. There are something called municipal services we group, like you have a property tax system, you have a building plan approval systems. So all these things we grouped under municipal services actually. 
And we have some backbone services like we using Postgres database and uh, as a database, actually, we are using Kafka to topics. We're using Elasticsearch, Redis, all these things as a backbone services. We're using Jenkins, the monitoring tools like Prometheus, Kibana, all these we can configure in this platform, actually. And we are deploying using the Helm charts, all these things, actually, as a as a Kubernetes we are using. So individual, these services, we are grouping as a uh, different pods, actually, and we are running under, orchestrating under the Kubernetes, actually. This is the overview of the things. We go see further, actually. So when you start anything, say how to start, actually, because Digit has different versions. We are releasing every uh, bi-monthly ones or quarterly ones. We are releasing the new, new versions, actually. So I'll just go through those things actually briefly, how to find out your versions and which version of things we need to use, these kind of things. Example, urban.digit.org is, this is our website where we are publishing all the releases actually. If you observe here, the latest version is version 2.7. Okay, here, if you click on this, you can see all the remaining previous versions also like it's in 2.1, 2.2 like that. So each, what we are doing in each version also important. So if you go to a particular uh, versioning, will it explains what are the releases happening in this version actually. So in the version 2.7, it gives the overall summary, what additional features we added, like we released a national dashboard as one of the extra functionalities, which contains these modules dashboards actually. Similarly, other module changes, what are the bug fixes we did, any announcements we are doing on the existing modules, all this information we, we are giving in the release documents actually. So what to do actually, how to adopt this example, let's assume you're already in version 2.6, you need to adopt this new version. So each steps we are providing here actually. So example, we have the master data management. To do the master data management, what are the changes you need to merge actually? The code changes, we are adding all those information in this release document. So what are the builds we are, so we are giving versioning number also in each for each services. So what is the service build we are supposed to use, we are giving. So this entire information is available in the, this document actually. We are also publishing the test cases which we are used, which you can use also and run actually. So what are the additional test cases? And uh, so if you go through these documents, it will give more details about this particular version release actually. And any major things are there, like example in the national dashboard is a major thing we release. So it will give more detail about this particular feature in this document. So national dashboard means what actually, what we have. And uh, this technical document plus all the KPI definitions, everything is provided here. So it, so it, as an end user, you will get all this information about individual module specific changes plus what is overall released in this version 2.7. This is, so this is the official website like urban.digit.org where you will get all this information about release management. It's a fun thing. Second one is, as a state, when I'm going to, as a new state, what first we need to do is we need to uh, fork our code actually. So as I mentioned, Digit is, is an open source. So the code base is available here actually. So Digit OSS, this is our uh, uh, code base where we are, so this, github.com, this digit OSS. This is an open source code where you have, we have some folder structures. Okay, I'll, I'll explain this. What is this mean actually? We have also, if you go to a different branches also, so we are saving all the branches information also. Like uh, every time when we are releasing a new versions actually, those information is also available in this, this person. Like the example, there are seven tracks we had. Version 2.6, 2.7, each version wise code also is available here. It's a, it's a releases we added actually. If we go through that, you will get more details actually. What is there in each module? What are the changes we did? So version wise also we are showing actually. So 2.6 is released on this particular date. 
2.5 like this. So what functionalities we added, that entire information you will get in the GitHub level actually. Okay. So we need to, let's assume if you are in some older version, you need to upgrade in the sequential order also. That is also important. So if you are in 2.6, you need to upgrade it to 2.7 and you need to go further actually. That's how the process is. Second one is, so here, if you observe there are, as I said, it's these are all microservices. We divided into municipal service, core services, business services. DCR finance is a, another thing and front end and some utilities are added. So these are, it's a mono repo. We create club, everything, and we group under these microservices. Example, if I go inside core services, I'll get some set of uh, services like uh, take an example like localizations. When I'm accessing my uh, website, then take an example. This is my one of our UIT instances. When I open this, I'm getting some set of data like English, Hindi, some logos, all these things. How this is loading actually? So if you observe this showing m seva so this entire uh this is a master data we are getting actually like so this mdms data we are reading from yeah so that we have a something called master data management system this will manage all the master data uh, required from it is managed this service will manage actually similarly we have localization services how to load my different languages like whether we by default we added english and hindi if i how the localization will load from the either from the database to manage all these things we have a localization things similarly these are all like we digit is a role based system actually here we are mapping a different role to employees and based on the role base the system will behave actually how to map all this role base how to access all these things we have a access control as a one more service Similarly, to upload the documents, we have a separate service. If I want to enrich something, it's an encryption service. Encryption like uh, I'm saving to for the safety purpose, all the data, what we are saving the database, like name, mobile number, this, some parameters, we are encrypting and saving in the database. So to encrypt all this data, we are using the encryption service. To generate an ID generation, like any number formats, like you, we have, uh, uh, property tax numbers, water charge numbers, all these numbers, we can format it actually with our own formats by using configurations. For that, we are using the ID gen service actually to generate the numbers, all these services. Okay, so, so, team, so what we are doing is like OTP. If I want to get a OTP, so OTP service is there. To send the SMS, we have SMS service. To configure the mail, we have the mail service. So these are some example, okay? So payment gateway, when I want to integrate, we also added that is under payment services. So in this way, this is just an example. I'm not going so workflow users. These are all the different service. It's a self-explanatory to generate the PDF. We have a separate service. In this way, all the core services contains all the uh, basic infrastructure to run for any city actually. Okay. If you let's take if you are running only property service, so property tax service definitely need all these basic service first. So core service is a must. You need to take all these services. Additionally, you need to add, build top of that property service or related service, what you want actually, right? This is the core services actually. So this, this is in this way, we are divided. Similarly, we divided the business services. Business service like, as I clearly mentioned, there is a billing comes into picture. So some of the modules we need uh, demand we need to generate like property tax we need to generate demand every month or six months once yearly months similarly trade license we need to generate a demand for building plan approach system we need to generate a demand fire and we need to generate a demand for all these modules the demand generation logic is in one place actually so we are using billing service this service will manage how to generate a bill how to generate a demand when i'm doing collection in all the systems that may be a monthly half yearly quarterly whatever this is managed by the collection service. So all these uh, billing collection, we have a dashboards also. HRM is like for uh, management, like uh, uh, employee management system. Few finance things are there. All these things we group under business services. And so come to the last one is municipal services. So municipal service, so if you read here like 
this will give overall idea about uh, some set of services are there. Example, take calculator uh, like birth and death. We birth and death, sorry, building plan approval. BPA is nothing but building plan approval system. Here we added two services: one BPA service and calculator. So what is the logic is required is calculator part is purely customizable actually it is state specific by defaultly we added some set of functionalities like uh, the fees calculation logics all these things comes under calculation part we added the default logic maybe we are showing some five to six set of different features how to auto calculate this logic is there on top of that we also added the logic like how to calculate penalty these kind of things in calculator service but on top of it if any logic to be changed the state team will modify these calculators actually. So calculators is purely won by the implementation team. So in this way, there are two services we are normally defining. One for service, one is calculator. If you observe same thing, wherever calculation come into picture, we have two things. One is fire analysis service, calculator. Similarly, we have uh, PGR is only one service because there is no payment coming into picture. PGR is nothing but our public grievance register. So there is no payment concepts are there. So we added only one service. But in case of uh, property tax, we have property service and calculator. So all my calculation logics, all the, my business logic we are adding under calculator, my application part like application flow, all these things we are grouping under the services. So this concept we use to design our APIs also. So if you take, we divided our uh, uh, services like this actually. Water and sewerage. This is a sewerage and water. SW is water and sewerage. Trade license calculator like this. So we decided like this. So how to know that what is uh, the content of each folder? If I go further inside, you have a, some readme document where it explains what is this service doing and what is my dependency service as also. Okay. So this service dependent on user calculator, master data management, localization. These are the service names. These are the services it internally uses. So if you want to run, deploy the service, these dependency service also required. So we need to plan accordingly, actually. And all the contracts are available here. Like it, as I previously mentioned, this is all, each service defines the APIs actually to communicate. So these API definitions we already added here. So these are all the different APIs available in this service. This we are accessing, and this is the other services are using these services to communicate each other. Actually, example, we it supports create assessment, mutation, all these things. So it all the data is happening through Kafka topics. Actually, it is not directly saving to database. To how we are managing is we are divided all these things into our topics, and it's pushing data to the Kafka, and it is consumed by the con consent uh, other topics. Actually, okay. So this is how we organized individual services. This is the property services. In the same way, if you go to any services, you will get more detail about that, actually, in case of calculator service, if you have changed all this. So this is one more is, uh, there is a change log also, it will explain what are the different versions we release and all this content also will available actually in service level also. This is overall about uh, the different digit OSS things here. So one more is front end. So front end we separated actually. So we are using a React framework actually. So React, uh, we added a separate folder here. Right? So all the front end code is here. There's a mono UI and micro UI. We will go further details actually, but so how to install locally this front end, everything, all the steps are provided here actually. Okay, so uh, there are two versions we have. One is we have a, in the latest version, we have the micro UI where the new entire framework is designed here. There is a older version also with mono UI. So there are two versions we added in the front end actually. Other things are like uh, we need uh, EDCR and finance. So the finance module and uh, development control rules, like for building plan approval system, any drawings to scrutinize, we designed one more engine as EDCR system actually. That code base is also available here. So here, uh, this is in the DCR system actually. And finance module, so this also we can integrate with the finance system. The finance code is also, we, we kept it outside actually. 
So this is a code base actually. As a new state, when I am going live, actually, what we are doing is we are forking this first. Forking in a sense, you'll get an option to fork actually. When you try to fork, recently we forked this and we are managing. So when I'm forking this code from the digit actually, it will show from where you forked actually, example, this is the one actually. So my entire code base of my core services, everything I can fork specifically for the state actually. So this should be your individual state repo actually. In the state repo, you're creating your own Git account. In this account, as an organization, you need to register first. And then under that, you need to fork all the digit OSS code. So when you fork, you will get the similar folders, similar to this. The advantage of the forking, there are two options. One is clone and fork. The forking easy option is you can, whatever the releases happening, you can upfront, you can merge it easily. And the changes adoption is easy, actually. That's the reason. Similarly, the other things we are, we need to merge is, see this, if you observe here, we have other repos also. We have something called MDMS repo is there, config repo is there, some DevOps repo is there. Okay, so these are all the different repositories, it's forked here. So for a new state, we need all these things actually. One is digit OSS code we need to fork. The second one is some set of repositories required. What are the subset of repositories? We need some MDMS, we need some configs, some DevOps, and CI CD pipelines. So for the CI ops, also we have a separate. Um, repos we created. So these are all available in our digit OS, digit actually, in this framework. Example. So to fork the master data management, we have something called MDMS. So it's an ego MDMS. We'll go in details about MDMS. What is MDMS all these things? So this is one of the repository where we are saving all our master data in the Git itself, actually. It's in the file format, we're saving this data. This one, MDMS, we need to fork it actually to your concern repo, like similarly we must here. And we'll go in detail actually, what is the content of MDMS, but we need to fork like this. The second one is, and similarly, another one is DevOps actually. I'll, I'll explain in more detail what is the content of this, why these repositories required also. So there is something called DevOps. Here there is a two branches, one is master and one is release. So we are supposed to use this release branch code to set up all your full installations actually. If you want to set up your digit locally or on uh, a particular cloud environment or something, we provided the steps here, the DevOps. The DevOps session will cover that, but I'll give overview here. The DevOps, what, what happens, you have all the scripts, like we have a Terraforms we defined actually, the scripts actually. By using these, the dependency module, what you want. Example, as I mentioned, we have many multiple services, but you may need, example, you need only property tax or trade license. That you can configure it easily using our the scripts actually, what is provided in the DevOps actually. You can install only property tax or trade license, all these sets using this, this particular record. The next one is similarly, we have configs actually. This config is one of the uh, repo we created. I'll go in more detail about this on the in the further slides actually. So this one repo also you need to copy, which useful for, it, it's a client specific actually. That's why we separate it as a configs actually. Last one is CI, CI ops actually. The CI ops also. When you want to set up this entire services into your Jenkins, actually, we provided some uh, default repo also to prepare your own CICD Jenkins, actually. So uh, continuous integration and deployment also possible using for all these services using this particular repositories. Okay, so this is uh, one. The last one is, is uh, there's something called localization. So as I mentioned, Whatever you're looking here is these are all, each one is a key value pair. If you observe here, um, mobile number, name, all these things are, it's a, internally we are saving like a localization keys actually. For each key, there is a value. So based on the language, what I'm selecting, example, if I select Hindi, it is changing this because for Hindi, same key, what is a Hindi value we are adding separated actually. So this is a localization actually, we call it as localization. So 
we provided a separate release uh, thing for this also like each version wise what are the localizations we added also we keep adding here it may be in english so we just added some more set of extra parameters here so the data will be in this format like it is code message module local so a local is like it is in english it is for fsm module some what message i need to display in the ui and what is the code so this is what we are adding in the localization keys so i can up, upset this we have an api actually so using that api i can push all this data so we are preparing like a, this json format data and we are pushing to the localization it will save in the database and every time using this localization keys we are pasting this and using in the ui the back end everywhere actually. so this is a localization where we have the keys values for which module and a particular language or type actually whether it's english or something similarly for hindi we have our own separate things we are maintaining for each key actually take a question so we have hindi localizations so this is how we are managing the localization keys actually and it is by defaultly when you are going with new implementations we need to load this localization these steps are available actually but uh, any releases are happening this should these incrementally we are also adding all these things in here actually and we have some consolidated also so this consolidated contains overall entire english hindi so that you, want, you can copy this and paste for any city actually so that's how we prepared all this so we organized that i stop here so before i go to the next process as a new state what is our steps i will go through some questionaries you know any questionaries yeah please yeah one question q and a tab which uh, where sagri handa asks for how easy or quick it is, is it for teams to modify add workflows on front end and how decoupled is the front end see workflow uh, is a uh, configurable again it is we'll explain that how to configure the workflow actually so dynamically in what we are showing the workflow like we are showing the buttons everything example when i am creating a property tags i need to show in the first step submit button when i can go to the approval level i need some set of button so each let's assume in each stages of the workflow you have to do some set of actions some set of validations actually right so this we these buttons all these things are it is coming through our workflow service only it's a configurable whatever you are defining in the workflow scripts actually we'll show what is the json we are using to upload the workflow and in based on the workflow things the consent action will call and uh, we also mapping what happens the previous what next actually we are we'll explain that actually in the workflow configuration but it is dynamically is happening it is not like in e screen we are not configuring it's a dynamically it is fetching from the workflow scripts and it will use okay and then the next question also comes from neha how can how we can call the mdms json data from our service in local system so mdms i'll explain that in the next session is we have the mdms i'll explain and then i'll take this call actually okay i'll explain how mdms works how to set up all these things first then you will get a fair idea actually how it, how to configure this actually so we can move on yeah so in the next session let's assume i want to configure and set up for the new state now okay so now what to do next is a question Okay. Sorry. So now configuring the data. Let's assume I'm going uh, for a new state to implement. <coughs> Sorry. So first, what are the prerequisites actually? Let's assume normally any state. First, we need to decide. what are the languages required let's maybe let's assume i am implementing for the maharashtra then i need some marathi languages actually in all my ui right 
So these, we already have a, as I just now, I showed the localization keys, right? So each key we providing by default key, <coughs> English and Hindi actually. So English and Hindi are the two languages we by default we are supporting. If you need uh, Marathi or Punjabi or Kannada, it's a different languages. So for each key, what is the relevant message is required in the, the local language also we need to prepare first. So this is one step actually. So similarly, uh, there are some set of other things also like we need some preset of documents in document list actually for each module wise we clearly mention what are the documents required to go live actually we need to verify all these things whether for state specific whether this defaultly defined project level documents are sufficient or not so it's just uh, this these are the things we need to verify when i'm going live actually so the number formats as a platform we already defined some number format when I'm creating a property, when I'm generated receipt, when I generated my permit order, we using some standard permit order formats, everything. This, again, it depends. I can define state-wise entire one common number. I can define city-wise common number. How to set up all these things is also important. So I'll explain that in further IDGen service, how it works. But here, as a state upfront, you need to decide actually whether I need unique number across this city or across the state module wise again this decision making is required when you're setting up a new state okay and the formats actually so normally what happens most of the thing is we need to check whether my permit order format default what they're providing is sufficient or not maybe we are showing the one copy of receipt you may need two copy of the receipt how to configure that these efforts we need to cross check actually also the QR code, we are appending the QR code in all our permit orders everywhere. So the content, if you scan the QR code also, the content contains some information who approved, when it is approved, the application number. If you need any additional things to that and add on to that existing one, you can add that. Similarly, we need to create some uh, S3 buckets. So why we are suggesting that is, so it is dynamically, we are loading all these things in one place. Like we have city-wise logos, everything actually. So I can configure all these things instead of keeping these things as a part of code, I can keep in SC bucket and I can use this reference to configure my each city logos, my state logos. Maybe also we need it for the one of the global configured one JS file we need to keep outside. So all those things, we can use it, the S3 buckets for that we need to prepare we need to capture what are the different logos required. What is the workflow required? So workflow also, it depends on state to state again. Each city, uh, they may have their own practices, okay, in the workflow. This is, I'm always repeating the same wordings in all the sessions. Like workflow is a big problem in any implementations. The, the end user will not get uh, the overall view in the initial state. They may keep asking you to modify multiple times, okay. So workflow, we, if you make it standardized across the state, it will be helpful. Why it's behaving like this is normally it depends on their staff or something. The number of staffs are more, maybe example, take A to A, AWE or executive engineer. This is, if it is your flow. If AWE post is not there, they are thinking, okay, I need to change my workflow or maybe I need some additional validation in it, some stages actually. So we need to generalize this actually when you're defining the state if it is at state level it is very well and good but we can configure city wise also but it is we we suggest as a platform it is better to configure at state level and define and plan upfront about workflows actually the second one is master data master data preparation is a one more different session like what is master data how to capture this for each city how in each state and how to make use of this in our application is one more big process when you're going for a new state implementation. The other part is like there are migration may comes actually when you go with birth and death, you need migrations. When you go for property tax system, you may need migration parts actually. The default some, uh, what we suggesting is, we are not suggesting that, okay, you push everything through backend procedures actually. We are, as I clearly mentioned, it is a API based. For the APIs, if you provide the information, so like when you submit something from the UI, it's going to our servers in the form of an JSON format data. The same concept, if you use the JSON data, if you prepare and push through APIs, all the migration also, it's easy to 
push the data in our system easily actually. So wherever relevant data is required, it will say, for example, demand is in different service, user it will create in a different service. And in that way, it is easy to migrate actually. So we suggest use our APIs to migrate the existing data, use API concept and push all the data through APIs actually. So there are different workloads uh, in our system, like maybe uh, there are different services again, like in take of uh, believe an approval system, it is uh, approval process is different. My occupancy certificate workflow is different. So in each stages, what workflow is required, we need to proceed. There are third party NOCs will come actually when you go for new state implementation. They may chances that you may need to integrate with the third party APIs uh, for this is specific to building plan approval system. If your city has your own uh, monument authority or development authorities, if they want to integrate with them also, these are all customizations required actually. The, la the second one is SMS and email configurations. Defaultly, we are providing uh, some SMS services that, as I already mentioned, it's a configurable, okay? If based on the parameters, if I add all the things, it should work, it's easy to configure. You no need to write any code for your specific to SMS. But if they, uh, it depends again, SMS provider to provide. BSNL has its own set of parameters to be sent. We are defaultly added SMS county. Recently we integrated with the NIC uh, payment, uh, this SMS gateways also actually. Each SMS gateway, they expect some set of certificates, some set of different parameters to pass actually. For example, username should be USCR name for one user. So in that format only we need to send. So this, Integration part we need to plan actually. Similarly, emails also. So these are all. Second one is bank integration. The bank integration is also very important. Like as of now, we defaultly added the access bank payment gateway integrations. In other implementations, we also work with Paygo, uh, HDFC, other banks also. So as a platform, we provided these default bank integrations. But if you want your own set of payment integrations, so we have the payment gateway integrations are there. We need to make use of that. Additionally, this is purely customization. Now what I'm listing, all these things are customization for each state to go live actually. So similarly, like uh, Google map, if you want, and SSL configurations, whatever is there, right? So these same thing, uh, we need to change domain wise, domain registration is required, all these things is required. And uh, the last one is like uh, SMS template also very important. The SMS template, because as per recent uh, Troy, we need to register our SMS provider, the SMS template formats actually. And that template ID we need to append along with our messages when you're sending SMS to any end user. So for this, we provided what are the notifications are coming in each module? What is the notification format? So let's assume if you're going with BSN or some other third party actually, so using this template, you need to register first, get the template IDs, add that in our localization message so that automatically system will read this message. And along with this message, when you're sending SMS, template ID also pass to the SMS provider. So by this way, um, SMS integration is easy actually. The last one is master data. So master data, uh, we'll discuss further. So any, I'll stop here, any doubts here? I'll go with the master data management next. Do we know any questions? Yeah, yeah. So in the data, in data section, each module may need inventory information. Example, water module may need inventory information of pipes, road clearance, trucks, etc. cetera. Okay. Are there in, inbuilt workflows to set up to ma maintain the search inventory type data? Are the APIs are inbuilt to full post update their status? I didn't get the question. See, you're saying in water and sewerage, they need some set of inventory. The inventory is there. So whether so to inbuilt whether any inbuilt workflow is set up is there to maintain the those inventory type data. Are any APIs in, inbuilt to full post update their status? See, water and sewerage, uh, see, this looks like in the works requirement, actually. It is not like uh, 
uh, works management system actually that we are in developing actually but i'll i'll explain actually as per my knowledge how it works see when it depends if it is a works management actually when you are doing water connections actually if the inventory is required how we integrated is it should read from the different api see that logic is correct works management is not there by default you know actually what it's in our pipeline we are developing it in the next version but how it works in other modules it's like as you said clearly it is a api integration so if i want to contact the uh, inventory modules to get the, the set of default things required to complete one work order or something so we need to fetch from this concerned inventory and we need to use the data actually it's an again api call based on your different parameters we need to use i'll give some different example take a trade license module actually in the trade license based on my different trade types i need to decide my range so what we are doing there is a different parameter so it may be based on my trade type trade sub category and uh, based on the area all these use cases we are getting the rates from the uh, database which is already loaded so this is an api call actually it's a rest api call we'll get the data and we'll use it for further process in the workflow actually. and we'll clearly show we are auto calculating the pieces we'll show the overall what is the trade license coming to amount will come and it is a part of workflow we are using it that's it okay. so next stage is mdms okay mdms is we call it as a master data management system actually so there are uh, two ways to save the data one is uh, in our earlier versions normally we are saving all the data in the master data database level every time we are retrieving it we are keeping in a cache and then we are using it this is one step actually the other other option is in the similarly we did some investigation like how we can save in the different format so finally we assume mdms is a right option actually we are saving this mdms in the file store format what do you mean by file store format is so we define one of the service like master data management service this uh, service use this under core service right this service will responsible to read the data from the file store system use it for the further things actually so we are master data we are keeping in the file store format actually so this is responsible to fetch and store all the data from the master data and uh, also it is in the json format all over if you example this is our master data management system here if you observe here we have one master config.json one file is there here what we are showing this is our master format actually so this is how many masters we have in our system overall actually respective of the module we are showing here whether my mode of acquisition master is state level or city level this is my requirement so how we are doing we are just saying it's a state level master my mode of acquisitions my department my designation all these things i can configure and i say these are all state level masters actually but there are chances like i may say some set of master data is related to ulb level master so how to do this is example here that i'll show you but this is a mandatory actually let's talk tomorrow if you are adding your own new service and you want to add one more master if you are added you need to add that by defaultly here in this first master config.json and you need to define whether it is state level tenant or not by default okay that's how if you look here you'll get all the masters which are present in our system actually module wise second one okay let's assume if i go inside i have a different folders here ap mh pb what we did each state wise master data we are uh, copying it as separate actually so master data take pb what is pb this is for entire punjab added one state level master data folder similarly maharashtra separate ap separate i can create like this separate master data for state level if i go in more detail further i have a different folders i'll go through this okay so i have a different set of folders here defined for the master data 
every file when I'm changing something, I have a history here. Okay, so who committed what? So example take, I can vary actually by looking this. If you do any master data changes, I can see the difference who committed what they changed actually. That history I can see in the file store system in the Git form, in the Git only. Okay, this is one of the advantage. Okay, and every time if someone is modifying the data of the master data, it should go through approval process actually. When you created your own repository, you have an option to configure all these things, whether, whether approval is required, how many approvals required, all these things. So based on that, someone need to review this data and then data will go to the system actually. That's how it is. So one of the, uh, take UAT data. Definitely, I have PG only here. This is PG is nothing but uh, generally we added one state now. In the under state, how this organized is, if you observe here, there are some module names are there, like BPA, now billing service. So these are all FSM, DCR. So these are all property types. Module specific, we are configuring some set of parameters at state level. I'm in the state level folder now because it's a let's think PG is like. Uh, state level and i'm defining state level module level some setup thing there are some access controls some set of parameters are there and similarly i have city level also let's take i'm a city a city b each city wise also i have some module wise some data also. so this is how we organize so if i have any specific to city i have any parameters to be required i'm configuring here if I'm defining some set of master data at state level, individual module level, I'm defining what is my state level data. Example, for billing service, I'm defining what are my tax periods at the state level. It may not be required at city level. Let's say 1920, 21, these are the financial years, or it is a tax periods, I'm adding at the state level. Yes. Friends, observe here, all my, things are in JSON format, okay? Entire MDMS, all files are in the JSON format. It contains um, a some set of, this is my standard actually we are using, which tenant, it belongs to state tenant. This is the module name is billing service. My uh, master data is tax period. Under that, I'm defining multiple values. This is one value. I'm defining like this, okay? This is my entire JSON format. This is my JSON file. If I want to define file on SE explicitly, a different partially, like annually, monthly, all these things we are defining in one place. So this is the tax period by defaultly we provided at the state level. Similarly, we have the chart of accounts, different services, all these things we defined here. So take an example for property tax, what are the different uh, mode of collections are available? Like I want DD, RTGS, say these are all, when I'm collecting in the physically in the counters, I may show these options actually. There is a chances like they submit the NEFT. Why we added NEFT all these things is nowadays they are asking to, um, pause machines also they are integrating actually. They're saying, okay, I'm just collecting this money through these, uh, through pause machines. So we are providing those options also. So I can configure in each module, what is the mode of collections, advance is allowed or not. So these are all the flags, okay? So if I say advance is not allowed for water and sewerage, my entire water modules functionality will change. So this is, we are just configuring at the state level. So one flag, whether partial payment is allowed or not, is advance allowed. So module wise, we are keeping for the business services, what are the configurations required for water and sewerage we are maintained here. Okay, the minimum mode payable. So platform will give these functionalities actually. If you so tomorrow you can switch on, switch off based on your requirement, these things actually, okay? This is, this is so master data management is not only to maintain the data plus configurations also. You can modify your configurations based on your requirement. So I'll go more details actually to other things actually. So when you, so someone asked the question, like when I'm going live now, what are the things I need to configure actually? Like, so how to configure my tenants actually? 
take here when I'm selecting the different state actually. Let's assume I'm selecting the state here. I'm getting city A, B, C, D. How I'm getting, I may go with 10 cities first phase or I may go with only 100 cities. So th this is the configurations actually, what we did actually. Here, if I go with my new tenant, we call it as a tenant. Each tenant is a one city for us. So we have a folder called tenant actually. And also we have something called common master. These are the two major folders we need to modify in the first stage. Example, in the tenants we are defining, what is the different tenants we have in the system actually, okay? So I have a CTA, the entire CTA information we added here. Okay, so this is one of the object format we are defining actually, what is uh, the tenant information is required. I'm just adding the, any websites as there, the pin code, the city name, I can add the latitude, longitude, all these things about that city I can configure using the tenant configuration actually, the contact number of the city, everything I'm adding in the tenant folder for the city. Similarly, I can keep adding the city B, the city B, all the parameters. So this is one of the example I'm showing why city. So how we preparing also one more thing actually, as a, by defaultly, we are providing some Python scripts to convert this. We have, I'll, I'll come to that part actually, but how to convert this JSON is a different thing. You don't need to manually, type everything actually you what we are doing is we are capturing all the data in one template we have the for the tenant configuration you add all this data you convert into json we have some python scripts which will convert this data to json format you paste it here directly that's how it should work actually okay these are the json data like each city wise information we are saving here okay if you observe here these are logo we are adding in the s3 buckets so these are all open thing So it will it will refer this actually, PGSX. To cross check this. So example, this is the logo we added. So if I log in as a city A, I'll get this logo actually by default. So here, whatever is coming like this, this city A, this logo is fetched from using this, one of the configurations what we did here just now in MDMS. So this is a logo path. The system will read this actually. And if you observe here, the tenant, what it's very important. Friends, please observe here. PG is the folder structure what we added. Like this is the state tenant dot city. Example, if I'm using tomorrow, Punjab dot Amritsar, my tenant is should be unique actually, like PB dot Amritsar, PB dot Jalandhar. I'm just giving the tenant name like this. So it's very important that this code should be unique in our system. And the same code we are using in all our transaction table. By defaultly in our APIs, tenant ID is mandatory for all the things actually. So how it is using is based on this one. So it's a validations we added in many places, whether this tenant ID, what we are sending in each transaction is valid or not that is dependent on this tenant ids actually okay so this this is how it is configured actually when you are adding well, some set of uh, logo is coming this localization key is coming all these things are coming based on uh, using this master data so each code what we are using so similarly we are adding a localization key also like what is the message for this actually the description of the city everything we are adding here actually okay this is the tenant information Additionally, one more thing is national info dot This for the national dashboard. Cover this. These are additional languages we added. So we are also adding what are the languages required for each city that also we configure. The last one is, is here is the city module in this folder. So chances are there like when I'm going live, one of the city I'll say, I'll enable this PGR module, public remains only for these cities. I can configure that also. So I may go live, some cities only I'm releasing the uh, public remains, some city I'm just releasing the property tags. I can configure it. So when I'm configuring these, based on the city mapping, what we have here, these 
data should it will reflect actually See, that's how it is okay so different modules is decided based on this city module dot json also here if you configure this based on this it will filter actually so there's something called footer dot json is also important we have some footers we are adding in receipts what are the footers required all these things city wise also if you have your own declarations your own conditions logics if you want to add you can add it in these disclaimers actually okay so these are all related to tenant this is one of the important things this is the first folder we are modifying the tenant information about each city which we are going live actually the second one is uh, you know stop me if you have any major questions okay yep the second one is common masters in the common masters we have something called state info dot json so what this json is doing is here we are adding all the uh, our qr code url banners something we are setting what is the use of this For example when i log in first time okay in the landing page you have observed right so back end is punjab some logo is coming so how to change that actually so this is the banner we are saying my landing page banner is this so we added all these things to s3 bucket and we are using this to show in the back end so this is my landing page background okay so this we are configuring in our state info.json so this so see these are all the first steps we need to when you're going live we need to configure this actually it's a one-time task actually what my logo uh, there are different logos we are using there are two logos one is in black color and white color so those logos should be required and also i can configure what is my languages requ required in the landing page actually i'm configuring english and hindi if i want one more i'll keep adding like this actually just copy this add one more and this is a localization value actually it is english hindi we we use these standards if you need, tomorrow if you are using uh, malayalam i can say ml underscore in so that's my value here and malayalam should add as a one more parameters automatically in the landing page or in all the pages you will get the another one as malayalam that's how it is so this is the place where you need to modify that okay and similarly uh this is a one one major file where we added so this is a common master we added all the departments designations everything so by defaultly we added what are the different designation comes in the system this may be used by our masters actually it may be used in public revenue trade reserves it is used in trade license wherever master uh, uh, designation come into picture maybe in employee management system everywhere similarly departments designation all these things are we added there's something called cron dev also i'll just highlighting this actually so there are uh, we have some schedulers we are running for uh, payment gateway to run actually when a payment gateway is running we are running it in every half hour half 30 minutes once daily once those kind of things i can change all those parameters using this configurations also so last one i try to highlight here is id format so this is a one file configurations we adding the our number format actually when i'm generating my property tax number take the receipt number they are saying we added this format mp slash city code slash date format and sequence number this is the default one we added if you want changes example bill number we added just a sequence number and bill how it works is like bill hyphen 1011 that's what it prints actually bill number if you want to change this to change your format here so how it works is example if i want tenant wise i just need to add tenant to this actually take an example here along with this sequence see here it's a sequence is just a sequence name we added sequence ego commons if i add append tenant id to also to this each tenant wise it will create a separate number for this particular number connection id what a connection id is tenant wise that's the meaning so similarly receipt id is if i want tenant wise water and sewerage so ws is nothing but water and sewerage sw is the sewerage and water sewerage management system so these are the constants we are using if you want to change these formats you just change here actually this is a tenant information okay so this will be picked by the my id gen service in the core service we have a id generation one service is there so that service will read from here 
If sequence is not there, automatically it will create in the system and it will use further. Okay. So this is all related to MDMS. I'll I'll move a little bit faster now onwards. So other things we have is access control actually. So when I log in, I'm getting some set of actions here, right? These buttons, all these things, and everything, as I said, each click is an action in our system. So how to map this also very important. We have something called actions list. We have something called roles in our system and role action mapping. All these things we added here actually. So in our system, we added a one of the roles actually in our system. Example, citizen is also one role, employee is also one role kind of thing. We have a grievance officer, redressal officer. These are all the different roles in our system. For each role, we are defining a different action actually. What he can do actually. So this depends again, if you are modifying, you're adding your own functionalities tomorrow, you need to add these actions also like this and you need to map it actually. Example, location boundary mapping, this is my action name. So this is a standard format we are using for the action. I'm just adding, okay, this is my action. This belongs to, this is the, uh, path of the localization this is my action actually this particular action i'm mapping to the concerned role in this particular file so it's a role action dot json friends everything is in json format as i repeated so this data we're just saying for the ro role i'm adding the action id and the tenant id is pg so it's a state level so we're just adding these kind of actions to the end user Okay, so this is the role action mapping. So we have actions, we are defined the roles, the role actions we are mapping to in this particular JSON file. When you're creating employee also, chances are that like he belongs to multiple cities also, possible. When I'm creating an employee, you need to create in such a way that he belongs to city A as well as city B. In city A, we may enable some set of uh, modules, city B has some set of modules. So based on that role actions of that city, we are, uh, for that user actually whatever roles he has the actions the buttons it will show in the screens everywhere so this is mdms actually and uh, that's a major thing so similarly uh, module wise also also in brief little bit example as i said in the cta normally location is a one of the thing where i'm defining all my boundary this is where i'm defining all my boundaries. So it is a city wise. What is my boundary? Maybe ward, zone, city, zone, ward, locality. This is my order. Okay. In this way, I'm defining. Okay. For this, I have a different boundary hierarchy. One is revenue boundary or maybe admin boundary. For revenue boundary, this is my hierarchy. I have a different zones. Under each zone, how many wards coming? Under each ward, what are my localities? Okay. This I am framing in the JSON format. And we are preparing this and we are saving under individual city actually. So this I added for the city A. Similarly, if I have my own property tax rates or something, okay, let's take my, I have my own set of documents for property tax system. I can define it also. I'm saying, okay, for uh, property tax, the service for mutation, these are the documents required. So friends, it's very easy to add any new set of things as well as, see, the, this is a quote. The localization we need to upset for this actually. It's an address proof voter ID. So in the localization, we are saying what is the voter ID mean? So it's a voter ID it will show in the UI. So this is for property tax. Similarly, for each module, we are defining what are the additional things required for city-wise configuration. In the same way, module-wise, also we have some default parameter. As I showed just property tax. I have my own set of values here. What is my penalty? What is my penalty rates? I can configure. Example, for penalty rates for 1820 is 10%. For 15, 16 is 20%. I can configure it actually. So these are all parameters I can change. I can give the ranges. And these values we need to check when we are, like example, when you are going live with property tax, what are the default values is there as a proper product you can modify it actually based on your requirement. 
So this is my penalty rate. It's a 20% in some pages, 10% in different pages. I can configure it easily. The system will, based on the date range, it will read this file and it will decide. So there are different property types we defined already. We can build a, if you want additional things, you can add actually. And this is a code. Don't confuse. For this, you need to observe the localization things everywhere. Okay, so this is a MDMS system. As I defined, there are some set of state level things are there, model specific configurations are there, city specific configurations are there. This is a city wise I can configure in the MDMS system. Okay, so when you are going live for any state, what you need to do is you need to copy a similar folder structure. If you want state specific, you can rename these folder names and you can modify all these tenants as per your requirement in all the related files and use for the new state. For example, PG, I can, in the Git anyway, you can copy this entire thing. You can write for Kerala and you can change all the PG to replace Kerala everywhere in the inner files and you can start using it also. But how to point this also important. For example, when you're doing that, right? That comes in the DevOps side. How to refer this uh, MDMS in the application side, how to how we are making using all these things. Let's stop here, any questions till here? Yeah. Okay. Only the Neha question only. Okay. I think once we done this thing, the, that will be answered. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. So the next topic is how to prepare this template. As I showed model wise, we have some data, we have uh, state level, some data. So as a platform, we are providing a template actually. So what is this template is, It's it's available in our urban.dg.docs actually. So if you go through this section, the master data collection, we defined uh, some set of uh, templates actually. See, when we are saying master data collection is required for any state, so there are different roles coming to picture. Who will collect this actually? Then maybe it's happening through the state team. It's possible through the on-site team who are present. Some information required from the ULB level or some implementation partner. It's, uh, these are the different uh, stakeholders come into picture to collect this information. So what are the different types actually? There may be some state level, some ULP level. So as I already showed, so these are some state level information required. What are the different tenants you have? Um, how to configure what is the SMS is required? What are the default departments, localizations? This state level we can capture actually. So you no need to go through individual uh, uh, you will be able to capture this. This another one is you will be level. Like we have our own boundaries, uh, different bank accounts required for the financial model to integrate. All these things we need to capture from the ULBs actually. So this also, we have something called modules specific also. If you are going with property tax model, let's assume. I need module specific uh, master data also actually. So what is this template when I'm saying, right? So we also captured in each module, what are the different uh, values required actually. Okay, it's a unit rate or it's a property type. If I click on this, we are explaining what is our structure data you can capture. We provided the Excel sheet also to capture from the state team. If you share these Excels by downloading all these things with the state team, let them fill everything. Later, you can use this consolidated data to load this for the master data management system. Okay. So this we explained actually. So the same thing is there in this Excel also, in more detail actually, the template and the data format also, some examples. It also we defined what we expecting in each parameter also. What is my code, the language, English language. So we added, right? right? So in the same way we added in everywhere. And I'm saying it's a tenant. So we need tenant information. We added the uh, similar information of the tenant actually, what are the different parameters we expected from the tenant. So these are the code, name, district name, all these things. This is what, if they give in this Excel sheet, using some scripts actually, we can convert this into JSON format and we'll save this in the concern, tenant.json file in the MDMS. So this is our plan. So there are a few things are there which are really uh, little bit tricky things is like boundary, workflow, how to configure all these things all over. But 
for loading all the uh, boundaries, we have the Python scripts we prepared actually. If you have data in this Excel format, and if you use our scripts actually automatically, it will convert this into the JSON formats and we are using that in the embeddings. So this is the templates actually what we have actually. Uh, just now we discuss workflow actually. So how to configure the workflow? We define this is available in this document like workflow services there. Here also we are saving the data in the JSON format actually. So how we are preparing this is uh, example. This is a PGR default logic we added. So there are different states we are maintaining in the, the set of actions actually. In each state, what is my next action? And what he can do in this particular stage actually we are defining and who can take an action in this particular stage also very important. So in the initial stage, either citizen or counter employee can submit this. The next action is pending application. So these action buttons are will reflect in your UI actually. Automatically only apply is coming. When you go to the next level, when the current state is applied, when the current state is reject, what buttons we are showing also we are saying. Either reject or approve. And what, to, what is my next state? It will clearly show here actually. So this is how the JSON format we we are able to configure the workflow for each one actually. So there are a few APIs also available. There is a documentation also available here. What are the different APIs we have? If already I created how to update it. These APIs are available and we also provided the Postman script for all these things to upset uh, these data actually. This is related to workflow configuration. So similarly, as I mentioned, the boundary also very important. We need to take a call what boundary you're using for your workflow actually maybe are, are you going with admin boundary or you are going with uh, election mods you are going with revenue mods these are all matters in each city has their own practices actually in some city they are going with election ward wise workflows some city they are asking i need uh, revenue ward wise boundaries so based on the the overall collection they are divided as a revenue boundaries election ward may become as multiple revenue wards the third part, third type of the thing is admin board. So they're managing using world structure based on the administration walls. So these, uh, we need to take a call actually what boundary we need to configure for the workflows also. And these are the uh, locations actually, as I already mentioned. So how to configure this is clearly mentioned in the MDMS. We have this data we are absolutely uploading. And to upload this, we have a different APS actually. There's an, we have a boundary. We are using these APS actually internally in the system, in the location service to read this data and use it further in the application process. Uh, the next one is, uh, there are module specific things are there. Only we are uploading in the backend uh, is localization one thing actually, when you're configuring any new state, localization is a one through APS we need to push data. Locations are saving the database. Similarly, trade and property tax, we have some rate master. These two things also we are pushing through database. All other things are master data is in master data management system. Uh, the next one is like configurations. What are the configurations we, we can do actually? As I say, when we clone the data, one of the thing is this is our uh, digit OSS, MDMS I already discussed. Next one is config. What is the use of this config is also important. Now let's assume I want to change my uh, receipt format changes. Okay, what, what platform is providing an option is, so these are all options are available here actually. You just no need to modify through coding actually, it is through configurations so you need to modify the parameters. Okay, example, take, just a minute. Take an example, we have something called PDF service. There are two things are there. One is format, one is data. What is my format of my receipt? Let's assume. So the PT receipt format is like this. When I'm showing my PT receipt, we added that in there in a format, JSON format actually. So using this, I can show what are my different fields required. Receipt number, date, contact us, all these things we are adding. But 
to feed this data, what we are doing, we define some variable names here. This data is available, is fed to this one using data.config. So they are, every time when you are doing PT receipt, there are two fields we are using. One, one place is in data configs, one is on the template actually. So one is here template level, we are just defining what is the format of our JSON receipt. And in another JSON, we are defining how to feed data to this JSON. So we are reading this variable one should refer from the property tag financial year. The variable 35 should be tenant. We are mapping the individual fields like this. So if you want to change your format, you can change it actually. Okay. This is how we design the output formats actually, so that you can modify on these JSONs actually as per your requirement. We have a receipt, mutation certificate formats, property bills, property receipts, trade license receipts, trade license certificates, everything. So it's it's like uh, French, it's like our object structure, okay? For trade license object we are using, that object data we are using to fill up this data format. So what service we are using for this is PDF service. This PDF service is in our core service. That service, core service will use this data and it will prepare on the output format. Okay. So it supports all the languages, what language you have selected, all this it will utilize. It may be, you can pass a language also, whether it's a Hindi or English, based on it, it will generate the, this output format. So it is, it's configurable actually. So this is available in your config folders. And uh, similarly, we have something called report sections. The reports, what happens, all the reports you can dynamically generate also. So let's say as a, as a platform, we provided these many reports actually. Module wise, we have public revenge reports, PGR report, all these things in the J, in the YAML format. In these YAMLs, we have all the data actually. For example, if you go inside the PGR report, if you want one more report in the PT, we're just adding here actually. We define one PT receipt register one report. We are saying what are the different columns I need to print actually as an output. Okay. And what are the search parameters? And I want to filter it based on the date, based on the status, who collected, if I want to collect. So we just added all these things. I can write the query also, okay? So what is the query I'm using based on that? It will generate this and it will show the report. So if you want to keep adding extra power reports, we're just adding one more section here. Dynamically, this report will be visible in the UI. Only the thing is this action you need to map actually. That's the only thing. If you provide a role action to the end user of the related one, automatically this report, there's no UI you are modifying anything. This report list automatically extra report will add as example, PT collection report. On click of that, this uh, all these search parameters, visible, what output expected, everything will work automatically. So this report service we are using for this, the report service will read the data from this. Based on the module wise, it will generate these reports and we are configuring this reports. The, similarly, we have something called searcher. The searcher is one of the API. So it's, see normally microservice, all the data is in uh, uh, possibilities are there. You can make use of different databases also. In our system, for the DCR system, we have a different database. Finance, we have a different database. For entire digit, we have a one database. That's how we structure. All the service mapping to one database as of now. But Chances are that it may link to different databases also tomorrow. But some cases, what happens? You want to join different service tables together. So, and I want to uh, do further, like I'm generating indexes. Actually, I just want a simple query. So, see, so platform also providing that option also. Like when I'm joining my inbox, I may join use these concepts. Actually, I'm just using uh, this definition, and I can write entire query here also directly. And using this searcher API, this guy, it acts like an API now. This is my TL service indexer. This is my query actually they are using. And directly this will use this particular data actually. In this way, the queries we can write directly in the searcher API. For example, in the inbox, we define the query actually. What are the different tables we use and we are using it. So this is possible in searcher thing. 
Next one is persistent. The persistent is like every action when we are pushing, right? As I clearly mentioned previously, it's a topic wise. When property tax is collected, I'm pushing property topics saying that you save the property tax related data. Also, I'm triggering workflow. So I'm also telling the workflow service, you trigger the workflow data. When data is saving in the database, it is happening through these persister one services. The persister service is in the core service. This refers this data based on the topic, what are the data I need to push into the database. I'm repeating, based on the topic, it will decide what are the data I want to push to the system. Example, take property service. When I the end user says, save property tax service, what, which, where and which data I need to save into database decide based on this persister service. Okay, this persister service has, we have all the insert scripts. By looking here only, you can say, okay, for property sex, what are the tables we are using in the database? And it uses in the JSON format again. So we are inserting to the tables from the object structure. Okay, this is how we define. It's saving to property, property detail, everything. Documents, owners, address, this table, units, institutions, when I'm doing update topic, when I'm updating the property tax, it calls this topic and it will fire these queries. This is the concept we are using in the persister for individual modules. Similarly, we define for all the modules like this. Okay. So module wise, we defined all these things, the persisters, and these persisters is used by the different topics actually, when every action is defined here. This is a persister related thing. Similarly, the next topic is uh, we have something called indexer. See, we are, as we said, we are showing the dashboard actually. We have a dashboards also for the dashboard to refer. We are not referring the database query every time. We are pushing this data to Elasticsearch in our system. So indexes are important. When I'm saving my property tax in the system, I'm setting some data in the property tax to persist to that database I'm saving. Also, I'm pushing this same data in indexes in the Elasticsearch. This is how different topics will communicate each other and parallelly asynchronous calls will happen and it will save like that, okay? When I'm saving my property tax, also I'm pushing the data to my property services also. So these indexers we mentioned when property service registry is happening, you also push this data to my property service index, okay? And what is the columns required? It is added here. Okay, this way, the data also pushes to the elastic search using the indexing service. This is also one of the core service. We have the indexer service using that. This topics will listen on save of the property. It will push the data to property services also. So similarly, other modules, we added all these index, indexes, which are required actually. Okay, these are all the different indexes we have for, it's a self-explanatory like, Chartboard, we have something, we have vehicle, vendor, all these things actually, telemetry, everything. So these are the different services, okay? This is the configurations. So, so every step we defining some set of the listener come into picture like uh, Kafka topics, uh, that's how it is listened by indexes and it will work. Uh, similarly, dashboard, tomorrow if you are using our dashboards actually, dashboard related indexes and ingest. These are the two services we are using. In the, these are all also available in our uh, municipal services, I think. So these services are using this data actually. Like how to show, when I'm showing my dashboard, dashboard, we define a different KPI, okay? How my collection data should be, all these things defined in the individual dashboard related things are defined here actually. We are doing indexes for to support the dashboard. And this data will be used in our dashboard, actually. So in the dashboard level, we have something called analytics. Here we defined all the KPIs, actually. It's a chart KPI, which explains all the, it's a big file, actually. It will take a little bit time to load. We define the KPIs, actually. The number of properties collected, all these things how to show, how to use, we are using these KPI definitions actually. So it will read this query actually, from the Elasticsearch it will fire this query and it will generate the graphs. Okay, this is for the 
friends, please go through this later. Actually, I'm just explaining where we placed all these things actually. So this is the overall configs actually. So this is config is state specific actually, and we need to modify as per our requirement actually. By platform level, we defined all this differently. If you need any, let's say second dashboard, we are showing 20 parameters. If you want one more chart, using the, in these charts, you need to add those additional things and you need to enhance it actually. If, if it is not sufficient, what we provided by default. Okay, so this is the configurations. Let's stop for a few. Any questions? You know. Yeah, problem. So first one is what framework, what tool we are using for developing reports. Okay, we are not using. See, it is again. It's a service we added actually for reporting service. So here, if you just like, I just need to config in saying that okay, these are the such parameters. I'll try to show you actually what we have now currently. Now, if you log in as an employee, actually, any saved or not. Let's try with BPFA. BPFA. So do we have property tax money? It's not the right user, I think. BPA DV something. Try with that. This one? Not that one. Not sure. BPA DV. BPA DV. Capital letter. BPA DV. Document repair. DV. DV. Now V. Can you share any users? No. Can you show your friends? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Let's see. I'll, I'll show that actually. I'll just. Uh, Team will show actually. See so what what happens is here when I'm clicking on the reports actually. So this automatically it will give you a screen where. Uh, we have all the reports actually where uh, the search parameters it's a dynamic thing actually we are not adding any extra any ua effort for this so based on what uh, configurations we added based on that it will fetch everything that's how it is designed So this is just a report framework actually, and we need to make use of this actually. Yeah, have any. 
So any other, other questions? Yeah, and then please explain EDC as setup and configuration. One of them asked. Other than Nisila, can you please explain the technical documentation process for the system? How is the system being documented in terms of the code? Okay, so uh, if you go to the docs or digital, we have technical documentation also where each service wise when you're going uh, we added the concern uh, documentation also what APS we have I showed there are two things one is there are documentations added what is the API is doing we have a swagger document is available in the individual services also we are added the swagger documents as well as what are the APS defined and what is technical documents also available in our urban.digit.org. Also, we have one, one more website as uh, code.digit.org. In these two websites, you will get all the service-wise definitions technically also. Uh, you know, one more question you asked before that? Uh, EDCR setup and EDCR setting. Okay. EDCR is a big topic. I, I explained briefly actually what we defined actually. So EDCR uh, code base is available here actually when you are going to EDCR service. So this, this is a service. What we are doing is we have a images in our system. Uh, we define the three things actually. One is there are different rows coming to picture. There is a bylaws we need to configure based on the state bylaws actually. So state specific bylaws we need to first convert actually. We need to read the states by bylaws which gives how much my road distance should be, my building height, all these things they define. Right? There are different parameters. So based on this, we need to convert the bylaws into logical formats and this we are coding in the DCR part actually. Internally, we divided, uh, we are reading the drawing parameters. So the architect, what he will do, we defined our own set of layer names and color codings. When you are defining my plot boundary, they need to use my layer name like plot underscore boundary and define the plot boundary on their existing drawing. Okay, in this way, they are explaining what is my plot boundary, what is my build up area, is with the layer names what we provided. They are also using color code to define whether it's a residential or commercial to bifurcate that, to identify, the system will identify based on this color codings. Take an example, I'll give 25 for residential, five for commercial. So they will mark like that in my same ground, some part is residential, some part is commercial. Using the color coding, they'll define the layer names. This way, they will give the input to our system is this image. Using this image, we are uh, extracting all the drawing parameters. We are checking whether everything is properly correct or not based on the bylaws actually. So the coding is part is in the uh, backend service. We are using Java code to add everything. So it is in the, in the Java format actually. So this is the code base actually which we are using. So these are the different service we are using for this actually. Please go through this uh, service document. It will give you more information. Using this, uh, In the right path. Sorry, which one? Go look at features where it is. Uh, go to the DDs here under service. Sorry, they come out and then the feature uh, one more package is there. No, no, no. Here, before that, uh, under the uh, service. Okay, so these are our different features. Okay, so how it works is we are extracting the drawing comparisons, and mm -hmm. these are all different uh, functionalities or features you can call it as. We are validating the balcony, building height, chimney, the coverage, all these things, okay? So each feature-wise, we'll go through this drawing actually, whether my scrutiny should 
validate all these things or not actually there may be chances like uh, parking what is my parking logic we are just showing in the java format we are we are comparing actually what are the logic we need to compare all these logics are added in the parking dot java tomorrow if any changes required only parking related by loss change we need to come and maintain the history plus the parking related changes in this one file that's how we structured our uh, feature wise things actually the system we added in such a way that it will manage multi mixed occupancies addition and alteration use cases all these things we are managing also every time an amendment happens to manage those code bases in our system we are managing a, we standardized actually there is a different we defined the standards to be follow to use the edcr if you manage that the system will uh, process all these drawings in that format actually like for the occupant certificate we need to manage all the old bylaws also so so those things we are managed in the edcr system so overall dci system will use to scrutinize actually it is we orchestrated actually as a separate service actually uh, it uses internally a, a jboss server all these things actually and we are creating it as a separate pod and running under our digit uh, platform actually okay so it's a big topic actually please go to the document this is the overview actually about edcr so we are using all the open source tools actually we are the drawing format is .dxf file so drawing exchange format is a open source uh, format it's similarly like how xls xlss we have different formats drawings also you can say in dwg uh, dxf file format all these things we are expecting it as a .dxf file format and we are scrutinizing this drawing by going through city wise configurations also it is possible that i can define state level bylaws city level bylaws and based on that this this engine will scrutinize these drawings and it will provide the output actually if any parameters are wrong it clearly says what is the parameters are wrong there is no any offline softwares are provided for this everything is happening through online actually that's how the system is designed so the so the end user will upfront upload all the drawing through online and uh, system will validate upfront in through online only whether it is valid or not this is the dci system okay so last topic i want to cover is devops actually here what what is the use of devops also important like as i showed here when we are forking all the things we are also forking the devops on more uh, folder actually so it's a digit we just give a different name so under this we have something called helm charts actually so helm environment so what is the use of this file is i have a different environment level files here i don't want to show client specific just a minute take the boxes to deploy as code helm environments so under the environments we have a different environment wise files so why we are keeping like this is because for dev i have a different environment qa separate staging different production separate like that we are maintaining take an example in the uat what we are doing here is this is a one file we are adding all these configurations i just showed right so some of the in this file uh, when i showed the configurations actually this i defined for the configurations okay but i need to mention somewhere my system saying that okay use these persistors these indexers how i am mapping all these things is in these sections actually this is the one file which i am using for my entire deployment we are defining what are the services i am deploying here okay and here we are just providing the db paths which db i need to connect what is my state level tenant pg pv kerala whatever is required this is my state level folder name we are added actually this is a pg okay what is and we added all these things actually okay these are the different module specific configurations we added 
and also we are defining what are the different services is we are going to deploy together so these are all i said we are added all the modules actually which we provided by default you need to modify when you are choosing okay i may not need all the modules you can filter it actually example you may not require my legal case management you remove it okay probate tax if you don't want you remove it so in this way we are defining all the services which are running in this service and individual module wise also we have some configurations example i can increase my pod size everything using this example here so there are some parameters at run time i can override right so these parameters we can do here example my file store i have a different things i can use s3 is enabled or not menu is required or not whether where i where is the bucket where i am saving all these parameters where i am defining here what are the images are allowed in my file store i am just allowing jpg these formats if i don't want to allow some different formats i need to configure it here so these are the product level configurations are there on top of it you can modify it actually okay then similarly we have something called sms when i am configuring my sms what is my we provided sms county here if you are tomorrow you have a configuring with your uh, bsnl you please use the modify this sms and what are the parameters is required here they are saying it should be username parameters should go as a user password should go as this parameter so these also we can configure it so by this configurations i can configure my sms directly see the replica also is important here i can increase number of pods based on my necessity and load if i have a two loads of replicas running if i want to three i just modifying this and running this service deploying it again this is what we are doing i can increase my size everything here okay so this is one of the file where we also adding my indexers everything so there is something called zool proxy we are using in the zool proxy this is very important what we are doing is we are define some set of open endpoints url the meaning is when you are logging into our system we no need you to uh, log into our system like property sars i am giving openly to all the end user so i can make this as open endpoint actually there is something called mix endpoint mix endpoint use case is required like uh, some set of actions i am internally using our internal system user user ids all these things example right i am running some scheduler every time this is also an action in my system so when i am saving my system i am using my internally what is the system user i used actually right so these are all going under mixed endpoint you get it but there are open endpoints are like i am just opening this url to everyone openly okay when you are doing the third party integrations all these things we we need to be very careful which opens apis we need to open and which should go through our zool actually for all other apis it's a role based action so each action is going through zool proxy and zool proxy will decide whether it's a open end date or any authentication is required or not all these things is decided by the zool proxy okay so these are all service level configurations example persister is it when i am define my persister service i am saying use all these persister files tomorrow if you add any extra functionalities and you added your own persister file you also need to update that file path here similarly indexer also if you are adding your own extra index you please add that file here so that the indexer service will read all these files and it will use for further process so mdms also we are clearly saying okay this is my mdms path which branch i am using so this is what you are changing actually in your environment environment in the dev environment i am just giving the dev path uit i am giving the uit path okay so this is one environment file you just need to go through that what are the changes is required as per your client requirement and module specific any changes are required you need to process here okay so with a short of time we'll go to the next topic as customization okay so we have hardly two three topics we need to cover we have around 15 minutes time you know can you continue please yep okay
so next is how to tell this one only in a customization okay so next is how to customize okay so they are so we are like a pre defined we are providing the so so we are pre defined providing the some core services okay so we are not suggest to uh, touch those thing okay so re, those are the standards or it almost all the use cases it will support all the thing okay so that's the core service so if you want to customize those thing your customization will come under municipal service only so most of them will come like a calculator those thing only it will be customizable okay what is the calculator level for each uh, municipal service here yeah. so if you have any calculation those thing is state specific you have to we have to customize those thing okay that's one thing and next is uh, like a payment gateway related so payment gateway so we are like a we all some so we have integrated some standard set of the payment gateways already so currently is uh, these are the four gateways available okay access paytm payu payu and phone pay okay and then uh, nac also so here here is if you want to add one more like a, for example if you want to add a one more gateway okay integrate for example i hdfc icc okay so what we are suggesting like a, you need to create one more folder structure kind okay icc or uh, hdfc bank okay so there so related so those related changes we need to put it to under that okay so we are providing some uh, interface those thing so you just you can add your log the related logic you can add it here okay so and then what are the keys so the secret keys everything will be uh, configurable it will be overridable at the environment level in the devops environment ml file level you can override all the whatever the secret because of uit is a different secrets will be there and production different secrets will be there okay those will add it in application property file from then from environment level it will be like uh, this one also so sms and we are already providing okay two things okay one is you, you can an existing can make use by uh, we have hooks so like we are providing as a uh, pre hooks and post hooks okay using those you we can uh, uh, integrate those things and then uh, next next one is uh, like a uh, configurations so uh, as pradeep already explained that uh, we have to do that in the my mdms level the configuration we are doing those things okay that state specific configuration everything okay so when you this logo those thing uh, like id format those saying is uh, customizing that all uh, boundary data everything okay and next one is like uh, we have like a uh, okay service okay already we are providing some services for example like uh, in the calculator level okay there is a two ways like customize one is that you can just you can pour that entire uh, calculator service and then you can customize or as you are one whatever you wish you can customize that is one way other way is like a, you don't want to customize uh, i mean over it all the thing if you want to, you want to put it with some additional logic okay on the or some you want to put some additional validation for example before cal calculating the calculator okay if you want to call the uh, uh, some other api okay so at for that purpose we are providing the uh post and pre hooks okay so they this zoo level we can configure this and pre and post hook uh, url okay so the zoo uh, it will know invoke those pre hooks so for which api you need to invoke this thing so that zoo level we can configure okay so there it will invoke the uh, those endpoints that is one thing okay we only if you want to add any validations okay on the top of the existing api if you want to add it any uh, additional validation for those purpose we can use this uh, pre and post hooks that is the existing uh, if it is separate service that as i said that that specific property tax calculator is a state specific thing need 
okay just we'll entirely we fork that uh, repos i mean that service calculates the service and then uh, according to the uh, state needs we'll customize that one so on the existing you can configure one is a and you can extend as using that pre and post to you can uh, extend those thing okay if you want to put in additional validation uh, on top of that you can add the new new apis also so you can add a one more like a custom service okay one custom for in other places for how you are doing so we are creating like a separate one more repo like a, so not a, uh, one more repo as a custom service so there we are adding the custom that specific okay for that state specific whatever we are doing or specific to those thing we are adding that that's also we are adding one more service okay so there that state specific any customization will come there okay so they in the places we are adding uh, any new endpoints if required okay if you want to put it for example example i'm saying like a dcb report okay so if you want to prepare some dcb okay daily collection report those thing okay that state specific thing so if there if you want to put it your own things on that okay so for those you can write uh, some custom um, some, some endpoints and then you can write it your own logic okay you can build it on there so this whatever we are extending you know those thing is deployed in a, a separate one or independently by the owners so we are uh, in the digit all the api all our all the services and we are talking through the rest api calls only so we, you can integrate easily to with any third party also okay if you are, for example this uh, like if you want to integrate to phone pay go google pay okay those kind of things okay you can easily integrate with those things because everything is in a rest endpoints only in the digit level so we are all like okay, we are following this open 311 standards only okay so we are you need to follow the same conduct only when you want to so when you end when you developing a new endpoint you need to follow the same uh, standard so next is how to exist uh, in the existing service so this is a folder structure okay this is a default folder structure in the digi any service okay if you take any service in the digit level so these are the standard structure we are following okay in across the service whether it's core municipal all the service okay this is a full set under java you are like a different packages okay so under config consumer proxy service validator and then endpoint that web related is the rest point we are under web we are putting under controllers okay so this validator so with those things the positive that whatever we are making that uh, db call those things we are now repository level and the next is we have like a resources okay so next resources under we are have like a db okay so here is a like a uh, any that sql migration okay so the flyway my everything we are putting here okay if you want to go uh, so what are the tables you are required okay so for that more service okay so everything you need to add a, the you need to create a dot sql file okay so you need to uh, define our your ddls okay for your table what are the tables is required columns everything okay so we are using the flyway migration okay that it will take a that it will take a that uh, pushing those data to database it will create a table index everything as per so here one thing is like you need to follow the uh, time stamp okay we uh, this is a time stamp year month date uh, hour minutes seconds so these are the time stamp and that two underscores and then the name the uh, the time should time stamp should be unique one and this docker file will be the migration will be there and next is uh, the application property file okay so for a service related whatever uh, which are uh, you want to override okay environment level or any config you want to put okay you can put it everything under this application dot property file okay so that's something and then test uh, test cases every will be under this test folder will be available okay so change log if you want for existing service that change log will be available into this uh, change log and the local setup you can use this uh, uh, readme or local setup that one and then so what are that form you can refer this here what are dependency we are using what are the i mean uh, libraries we are using with those information available here in, uh, in the readme will be uh, here so how to set up locally all the this information will be in their readme level okay 
so this is so you when you uh, this is for existing as well when you develop new services also you need to follow the same thing only so our next is like a we have like a config mm. you know can you go to to do actually we have three minutes now. yeah okay so this application profile these are the server both run the the uh, kafka related so what are the kafka topic those in thing okay and next is we have like a api is a do and do you can refer this down so these are the standard what we are following okay when you develop a new and uh, service or api so you need to follow these are the uh, standard okay you, the naming conversion we are keeping like this okay service entity version and then underscore create these are the standard we are using and then the request info is some mandatory sub payload so this is the each api should have the request info object in the body level okay and as well as that uh, that response will be returned it will have the response info inside you will but it will it will be wrapped under that okay and then so mandatory field should be minimum okay for any api you can refer all the things and then you need to try to make use the existing models whatever in the platform available okay you try to reduce all those things for example these are the address user role audit details error response these are all already platform level available in the common okay so you can just try to make use you you don't need to create new things for uh, again again those thing you can try to make use existing thing only so this is Hmm? that's it about that uh, thing next is security audit so this is a handbook okay yeah. these are the audit we are a uh, security audit is then through the digit and then we have or uh, this uh, everything we have fixed this thing okay so um, you can follow this you can refer these documents so you this everything is uh, fixed in the digit team with this we are it because see we uh, we normally if, if you deploy in any uh, the environments like sdc all this is need security audit reports actually so we provided the different uh, possibilities uh, uh, how to fix that we provided all the solution also take an example rate limiter is one of the thing this by default we added actually if a end user try to uh, download 10 files max they can download in a minute actually this we can configure actually i can give some restriction also max 100 but you can't download thousand at a time actually right so this functionalities we added wherever required in our code also the how to fix the uh, these kind of uh, throttling attacks how to fix that what where to code the, we need to modify how to fix we added all these logics that vertical escalations horizontal escalations how to handle just this based on the different topic wise we clearly mentioned what are the security fixes also how to handled and how to in further in when you are adding your own services you please go through these uh, different logics also whether it how to fix the security fixes also for the new services which you are going to add so this is also documented in our system actually this is available we'll go to that digit so there are two major documents are there please note down you refer all our documentation references are there in urban.digit.org and core.digit.org actually all the core services related documents are under core.digit.org remaining is under and urban.digit.org any other questions one question is pending they are saying touch the payment gateway configurations also the payment gateway as already uh, uh, we know is explained we have different payment gateways already configured so it depends again on the integrators actually they will provide a kit for us actually right maybe in uitr production based on those values we can configure actually we need to write the payment gateway uh, we provided the steps actually how to configure the new set of uh, payment gateways actually we just need to extend those services what we defaultly provided additional logic we need to add like like reconciliation when coming to picture because each api is expecting their own set of parameters how to reconcile those bank failed transactions those things we need to add actually this is documented in the payment gateway pg service actually we call it as in the core service pg service one service is there please refer those documentations that's it from our end actually 
any other questions please please find I think Pradeep, there is a question about, I mean, not a question, but a request about uh, to touch uh, upon the uh, payment gateway configuration. I think that has also been covered in this, right? So if there is no further questions, we can, uh, we can wind up the session and move forward. Great. Yeah. So... Thank you, guys. Thank you for your uh, uh, time and uh, efforts. I hope you find this session uh, useful. Uh, thank you, Pradeep and Vinod, for your delivery. Uh, and uh, as I said earlier, uh, please uh, do not forget to leave your feedback. Uh, this helps us to uh, you know, uh, improve our future session. Do let us know what you'd like to cover, uh, what you'd like us to cover in future sessions and how uh, what sort of deep dive you'd like to see in future sessions. We'll try to cover those uh, in next. Thank you very much. And we'll reconnect at 2 p.m. Thank you. Thank you.